Jacob is here with us, and uh, thank you very much for your time. Glad it. to be here. Thank you. So, uh, Tracy, um, tell us, uh, I'll like start by talking a little bit about your, your um, background in writing and what you've done. All right, can you talk about that? Well, sure. I, actually, it's, um, uh, I've, I've been a professional writer for over 30 years now. Um, uh, I wanted to, when I first wanted to start writing, I was in fifth grade, I think it was, fourth or fifth grade. And I decided that the way one wrote a book is that one would just write a few more pages every day. So I, I started my first book in fourth grade. It was uh, a book called The X-1. I still have it, by the way. Uh, it was called X-1 because back in the 60s, everything had an X in front of it, if it was cool. And it was about a battleship because it was the only thing I knew how to draw at the time. So... It was about this battleship, and it went and it sailed out into the South Pacific, which is where all wars took place uh, back then. And it was a, this super battleship was attacked by 500 airplanes and 200 submarines launched torpedoes at it, and it sank. And this was on page two. <laughs> and and this was page two, mind you, of of that big thick line paper that you get in like elementary school. It had the dot in the middle, so you wouldn't like make the B too big or the P too small. And suddenly, I had writer's block on the second page. And I didn't know where to go with the story. I was written myself into a corner. My super fantastic battleship had sunk. Uh, I tried to pick it up again a little bit. You know, I, the guy was, I think the next sentence was something like, um, he was captured, uh, went to prison, escaped, got another boat. My heart was out of it. I, and I decided, you know, <coughs> I'm never going to be a writer. I'm just never going to be a, never going to be. So, you know, years go by, and, and suddenly, you know, yeah, I grow up, and, I, and, and, and uh, when it finally came down to it, I learned the craft, I learned the intricacies, the structure of writing, structure of story. But the very last thing I had to remember was that I still had to write a few more pages every day. And that's kind of been my life since, a few more pages every day. Actually, the way that uh, Dragon Lots got started was pretty much out of desperation. Um, my wife and I actually were living in Logan, Utah at the time, just north of here. And uh, uh, I was out of work. It was a, a bad recession at the, at the time. And um, we couldn't actually um, uh, afford shoes for our children that winter. And so in an effort to buy shoes for our kids... Um, we had, my wife and I had written some uh, Dungeons and Dragons adventures that we had been publishing on our own. We sent those into uh, TSR at the time, back when there was TSR. I was publishing the Dungeons and Dragons game, and uh, when we put that, put that in, we'd hoped that they would, you know, give us enough money for those that we could buy shoes for the kids that winter. Uh, as it turns out, they offered us a job. And so uh, I became... Uh, uh, me and my little family became the first people in my family to go across the plains the other way and took us all to Wisconsin. So we were in, when we got to Wisconsin, the, the question, as we were going to Wisconsin, the question was what could we, could we bring that would be of value to the company uh, and would justify them paying us money to write games. And so it was while we were driving across uh, the Great Plains of the United States that we this, that we came up with this idea of this story of dragons being ridden into war. And that was actually the genus of Dragonlance, where Dragonlance came from. When, when we got to the company, uh, they had done a massive study, spent a lot of money on a professional study. This is what people did back then. Uh, to determine what their core products were and what their core company was. And after spending all this money, the report came back and it said, Dungeons and Dragons is your core product. One, you have lots of dungeons. Two, not enough dragons. So, we had this idea for this series that had dragons in it. But we didn't want to do like dragon of the month, you know, kill the white dragon, take its stuff, kill the black dragon, take its stuff. And, we, and I had this story that my wife and I had developed while we were crossing the plains. And that's where Dragonlance came from. So you, you and your wife now are running together? Yes. Um, sounds like she's probably as talented as you are. <laughs> she is. She's very talented. And has actually always been a partner in our work. Um, from, from the very beginning, the first adventure modules that we wrote, that 
that I ever wrote or that were ever credited to me were actually written by my wife and I together in a little apartment, basement apartment um, in Provo, Utah. Uh, she is actually the one who got me introduced to Dungeons and Dragons. She's the one who got me into the game. And, and she has actually been uh, the secret weapon behind the scenes in everything that I've, that I've ever done. Uh, she and I were the ones who developed Dragonlance on the way across those plains so long ago. Uh, every adventure module that I've ever written, I've discussed with her and she's had input on. Every story that I've ever done, she's had input on. She's never had the credit for it, but she's always, she's always been there. Uh, and it's only been in recent years that we've been able to, to fully actualize, the, actual, actualize that and have her participate completely in the process and get the credit that she's really long deserved. That's great. I do a lot of, uh, of our own production now, which is an independent production, I think, is the future, actually, both in terms of, uh, of game products, certainly, and also in terms of um, uh, books and, and novels. The rise of the e-book has completely challenged and changed the publishing industry, for example, and the traditional publishing is struggling to catch up with those changes. Uh, as we say in our writing seminars online, uh, it's time to evolve or become extinct. And, and so the, the writer today has to evolve or become extinct. That's also true in terms of game design. Today, so, much, so many great things are being done with group funding in terms of games and getting games uh, funded uh, on, you know, on places like Kickstarter, for example, uh, where, uh, which is actually what we're doing now. Uh, we're actually going to be funding a game this year on Kickstarter this fall, um, that is, it's a game that's based on uh, on the Dragon's Bard series that my wife and I have done. Um, it's a design created by Richard Borg, who is one of the all-time greatest game designers I think in the world, uh, and is going to be realized this fall, this August actually, this August and September, in a Kickstarter program where we're going to be inviting everybody to come in and participate in in bringing this game to life. So there are, there are so many more opportunities now for an independent producer that there haven't been before. Yeah, in some ways it's the best of times and the worst of times. It depends on, on the individual as to whether they're going to take advantage of the changes that are taking place now or whether they're going to become extinct. Uh, you, you said basically it comes down to uh, the person that's had their heart in it and it's not going to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. I think that... I, I think that there's certainly a lot more opportunity now for those people who really do have a strong heart in what they believe in uh, and to realize their dreams uh, and share them with other people. The, these books are an example of the changes in, in, in media. This book, for example, this is, uh, this is even tied. We had wanted to publish this book traditionally, and we had taken it around with our agent to traditional publishers for some time. But the publishers didn't want to touch it, and they didn't want this book because it was a gentle book. It didn't have huge epic wars. And in fact, that's not what we wanted to write in this book. We wanted to write what you might think of as a pastoral fantasy. Or as my wife says, it's a bedtime story for adults. This is a book that you can read and feel good about. And it's not about huge epic wars and a lot of violence and bloodshed. What it's actually about is a small village in a fantasy world. And the people who live there. And the lives that they lead in a fantasy world. It's, it's a fully realized story, it's an epic journey, but on a very intimate scale. And so, this is the book we wanted to write, but we couldn't get a traditional publisher to publish it. So what we did is we used a new method that, that we developed, we called it the Scribe's Forge Method, where we took the way Dickens used to write in serial publication. I mean, Great Expectations, Tale of Two Cities, um, uh, a Christmas Carol. All of these are classic books and they were all written as a serial at the time. So what we did is take that idea and bring it into the modern age. And we serialized this book online for subscribers. People would subscribe to this book and we'd release the chapters to them every week. But most importantly, at the end of the process, when the, when the last chapter was released, we privately printed 500 copies of this book in this format and mailed a copy to every one of our subscribers so that they actually got the physical book, the souvenir of the experience. Not only that, but because we proved that this book actually worked, we were then able to take this book to a traditional publisher 
and they then have, are now publishing this book. Whereas we couldn't get a publisher before to do that. This book now is being published traditionally because we went a different route to get the book done. This book even tied, uh, with more proud of this book I think than anything else we've ever written uh, and is uh, going to be available here. Uh, uh, actually, where we are right now, we're uh, pre-release. We're, we're releasing it to a few people today. Uh, but uh, soon this will be available both in ebook format, the EPUB formats, and also in, the, in your hardback beautiful book here um, uh, starting next week. Great. No, that's great. Let's go back to your game real quick. So I sure. A question about that. Did you plan on uh, doing the, the trek that most uh, game designers are coming out with? Are going to follow like uh, going to Essen or PAX or uh, like uh, Gen Con? Are you I think all of those are going to actually take place, but we'll be taking this to Gen Con this year, the Eventide game to Gen Con this year, as a Kickstarter project. The Kickstarter campaign will be running over the Gen Con period and also over the um, uh, Dragon Con period down in Atlanta. And so it'll be an opportunity for us to premiere the game, show the game, and, and bring people in to support the project uh, going in. It's, it's pretty exciting, actually. That's great. Uh, do you still find time to play Dungeons and Dragons? Not as much time as I'd like to. The biggest problem, of course, is finding a DM for me. Um, everybody's too intimidated. Uh, everybody's a little intimidated about that. Now, we do run an event at Gen Con every year because if people want to play with me uh, quite a bit. We run an event called Killer Breakfast, which we also ran here. Um, but the Killer Breakfast event, the, for this year, for example, we currently have, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's over 700 people are currently ticketed for that event. So we run a role-playing game for over 700 people, and, wow. and uh, that's quite a party. Oh, no kidding. No. That's amazing. Give us your website. What's your website? i got a lot of different websites. trhickman.com is my main fan site where you can get information on me. We do a, an online writing workshop at scribesforge.com, where not only do we have uh, lessons and workbook material there, we also have a forum there for workshopping. And every month I do a live webinar with the subscribers there to go over their writing and to work with them. So scribesforge.com is a great place to come as well. You can always find me on Facebook also. Please do. And uh, I, I try to tweet as often as I, I can. Thanks for your time. Gladly. Pleasure.